And uh, let me just start, friend, from uh, Colorado. I respect you. I know what your, I know your concerns. I just, I just don't agree. I can remember being told by the Bush administration, we don't need the Detainee Treatment Act. Everybody said we didn't need it, but they were wrong. I, be, I remember being told by the Vice President's office during the Bush administration, it's okay to take classified evidence, show it to the jury, the finder of fact, and not share it with the accused, but you can show it to his lawyer. How would you like an American soldier tried in a foreign land where they're sitting there in the chair wondering what the jury's talking about, can't even comment to their own lawyer about the allegations against them? I've been down this road with administrations. And we worked in a bipartisan fashion to change some things the Bush administration wanted to do, and I'm glad we did. And we're working in a bipartisan fashion to change some things this administration's doing, and I hope we're successful, because if we fail, we're all going to be worse for it. Here are the facts. Under this provision of mandatory military custody for someone captured in the United States, if you're an American citizen, that provision does not apply to you. But here's the law of the land right now. If you're an American citizen suspected of uh, being uh, joined Al-Qaeda, being a member of Al-Qaeda, you can be held as an enemy combatant. The Padilla case in South Carolina, where the man was held for five years as an enemy combatant, went to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, and here's what the court said. You can interrogate that person in an intelligence gathering situation. The only thing you have to do is provide them a lawyer for their habeas uh, appeal review. So here's the due process rights. If our intelligence community, military, believe that an American citizen is suspected of being a member of Al-Qaeda, the law of the land as it is today, an American citizen can be held as an enemy combatant and questioned about what role you play in helping Al-Qaeda, and you do get due process. Everybody held as an enemy combatant here uh, at Gu Guantanamo Bay, captured in the United States, goes before a federal judge, and the government has to prove by preponderance of the evidence that the person is, in fact, an enemy combatant. There is due process. We just don't hold someone and say, good luck. You have to go before a judge, a federal court, and prove your case as the government. And here's the question for the country. Is it okay to hold in an American citizen who's suspected of helping al-Qaeda under military control, you better believe it's okay. Now, my good friend from uh, uh, Colorado said, this repeals the, uh, the Posse Comitatus Act. The Posse Comitatus Act is a prohibition on our military being used for law enforcement functions, and it goes back to Reconstruction. This is the central difference between us. I don't believe fighting al-Qaeda is a law enforcement function. I believe our military should be deeply involved in fighting these guys at home and abroad. And the idea somehow allowing our military to hold someone captured in the United States is a repeal of the po uh, uh, Posse Comitatus Act, you'd have to conclude that you view that as a law enforcement function where the military has no reason or a right to be there. That's the big difference between us. I don't want to criminalize the war. To Senator Levin, thank you for helping us this time around craft a bipartisan solution to a very real problem. The enemy is all over the world, here at home. And when people take up arms against the United States and captured within the United States, why should we not be able to use our military and intelligence community to question that person as to what they know about enemy activity? And the only way you can do that is hold them in military custody. And this provision can be waived. It doesn't apply to, to, to uh, American citizens. But the idea that an American citizen helping al-Qaeda doesn't get due process is just a lie. You go before a federal court, and the government has to prove that you are part of al-Qaeda. And let me ask this to my colleagues on the other side. What if the judge agrees with the military or the intelligence community making the case. Are you going to require us to shut down the intelligence gathering process, read them their rights, and put them in federal court? That's exactly what you want. And that will destroy our ability to make us safe. If an American citizen is held by the intelligence community, the military, 
and a federal judge agrees that they are in fact a part of the enemy force, that American citizen should be interrogated to find out what they know about the enemy in a lawful way. And you should not require this country to criminalize what is an act of war against the people of the United States. They should not be read their Miranda rights. They should not be given a lawyer. They should be held humanely in military custody and interrogated about why they joined Al-Qaeda and what they were going to do to all of us. So this provision not only is necessary to deal with real world events, it is written in the most flexible way possible. And to this administration, the reason we're here on the floor today, it was your idea to take Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and put him in New York City and give him the rights of an American citizen and criminalize the war by taking the mastermind of 9-11 and making it a crime, not an act of war. So, Senator has spoken for five minutes. Thank you. I will wrap up. So to Senator Levin and Senator McCain, what they're accusing you of doing is not true. You're codifying a process that will allow us to intelligently and rationally deal with people who are part of Al-Qaeda, not political distance. If you don't like President Obama, we're not going to arrest you. And I'm getting phone calls about, that's a bunch of garbage. You can say anything you want about the president or me. You just can't join Al-Qaeda and expect to be treated as if it were a common crime. When you join Al-Qaeda, you haven't joined the mafia. You're not joining a gang. You're joining people who are bent on our destruction and are a military threat. And if you don't believe they're a military threat, vote for Senator Udall. If you believe Al-Qaeda represents a threat to us at home and abroad, give our intelligence and military agencies statutory guidance and authority to do things that need to be clear rather than uncertain. We're 10 years into this war. Congress needs to speak. This is your chance to speak. I am speaking today. Here's what I'm saying to my colleagues on the other side and to the world at large. If you join Al-Qaeda, you suffer the consequences of being killed or captured. If you're an American citizen and you betray your country, you're going to be held in military custody and you're going to be questioned about what you know. You're not going to be given a lawyer if our national security interests dictate that you not be given a lawyer and go into the criminal justice system because we're not fighting a crime, we're fighting a war. There's more due process in this bill than any other time in any other war. I am proud of the work product. There are checks and balances in this bill that have been working on for 10 years. The mandatory provisions do not apply to American citizens. They can be waived if they impede an investigation. We're trying to provide tools and clarity that have been missing for 10 years. This is your chance to speak on the central issue 10 years after the war, the attacks of 9-11. Are we at war or are we fighting a crime? I believe we're at war and the due process rights associated with war are in abundance and beyond anything ever known in any other war. What this amendment does, it destroys the central concept that we're trying to pr present to the body and to the country, that we're facing an enemy not a common criminal organization who will do anything and everything possible to destroy our way of life. Let's give our law enforcement and military community the clarity they've been seeking and I think now they will have. And to the administration, with all due respect, you have engaged in one episode after another to run away from the fact that we're fighting a war, not a crime. When the Bush administration tried to pass policies that undercut our ability to fight this war and attain our values, maintain our values, I push back. I'm not asking any more of the people on the other side than I ask of myself. When the Bush administration asked me and others to do things that I thought undercut our values, I said no. Now you've got an opportunity to tell this administration, we respect your input. But what we're trying to do needs to be done, not for just this time, but for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, either we're going to fight this war to win it and keep us safe, or we're going to lose the concept that there's a difference between taking up arms against the United States and being a common criminal. In conclusion, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and all those who buy into what he's selling present a threat to us far different than any common criminal. And our laws should reflect that. 
Senator Levin and McCain, you've created a legal system for the first time in 10 years that recognizes we're fighting a war within our values. I hope we get a strong bipartisan vote for the tools in this bill. With that, I yield. Mr. President.